Hello, I'm Stuart Lee. And I'm Richard Herring from Cheddar. And you're watching Big Cat Diary, all right. Let down your hairs, forget all your cares. Kick up your shoes, here is the news. Take off your shirt, here is the dirt. Take off your pants, thanks. Not worse, it's live, not rehearsed. Made for no money, surprisingly funny. Welcome your whole set of pictures. Do they have no ideas? So let's see how they do on this morning with Richard and Jude. Was that us, Stu? We changed the crew on the telly. It was us that was our quote. Was it us? I don't Thank know. you, I am Stuart Lee. And I'm known as Richard Herring, and welcome to... Tomorrow! Yeah. They're all doing it, They're Stuart. not doing it, yeah. yeah. It's the show that's already been described by one caller to the BBC as inappropriately scheduled. That's right. <laughs> uh, but amazing news, I can't get over it this yeah. week. Gorgeous Price is Right hostess, Emma Noble, Stuart, is going out with John Major's son. Look at him there. He looks like Smike from Nicholas That's Nickleby, Stu. Yeah. What's going on? You know, um, it's like, you know, Christian Why? Slater, right? Christian Slater. Why? People say he's attractive because he's like a young Jack Nicholson, right? Well, James Major is like a young John Major. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you do it? Like you could have had me. The whole, thing, the whole thing's a setup. It's a publicity attempt by her, Emma Noble, right? Because Emma Noble wants to get her own TV show. And yeah. what could be more guaranteed to get her in every newspaper than going out with ex-Prime Minister John Major's son? Well, she could go out with ex-Prime Minister John Majors, Stu, that would yeah, be better. Yeah. Or she could go out with John Majors and James Majors together simultaneously yeah, in a maybe, kinky yeah. threesome. Possibly, like, yeah. Move over, James, it's my turn! Oh, <laughs> Fantastic impression. impression. Thanks, yeah. Can you do any other ones? Yeah, I can do uh, Norm from the Twix oh, advert. Nice. I'm Norm from the Twix advert. <laughs> Got a limited range. Mr. B. Oh, I'm Mr. B. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same voice. It is, it? yeah. The, the thing is, though, for some people, right, the idea of a smikish, brown haired, mini John Major's face bloke, that is the best thing they could imagine. Yeah, it's amazing. It's kind of different folks have different strokes, don't yeah, they? What do you mean? I don't understand. Well, I, I, mean, I mean what I say, Stu. Well, do you, you understand, understand simple you sentences? No, don't you know, you're a lad. <laughs> I mean, the Emma Noble, a 24 or 27 year old model, depending on what paper you read, uh, <laughs> would like different things to the kind of things that Arnold from different strokes would like to. I understand what that is how the show <laughs> Different Strokes got its name. What Nobody in the world likes the same things as Arnold's from Different Strokes. Right, what, what, what do you mean? Do well, you know, uh, Golden Graham's the yeah. cereal shoe. Arnold from Different Strokes eats those every day for breakfast. Oh, right, yeah. right, right. He, uh, he likes his favourite TV show is the Friday Night Armistice no. show. It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like different things to everyone in the world. Now the aims it. for this week's show, right? Aim one is to try and reduce the Earth's gravitational pull to avoid being hit by an asteroid in the year 2028 by forcing everyone in America to lose at least six stone each. <laughs> Aim two, to follow the announcement that Gordon Brown is finally getting married by finding a nice young wife for Michael Portillo. That's right. <laughs> Aim three is to fix small plastic trowels onto the end of the Queen Mother's walking sticks, making her the ideal combination of active mobile public figure and useful dog waste collecting device. <laughs> Aim four is to raise enough money to make everything on the QVC shopping channel free to everyone who wants them. Which probably won't cost that much. I think I've got enough money, actually. And aim five is to have the panpipes of the panpipe playing busker who plays the same tune outside her office all day smashed and banged into his face. <laughs> or something. Bit of a personal, personal one, that one. Yeah. We were trying yeah. to write those aims and we couldn't because... He was playing the pan pipes. If you see him, hit him. Yeah. in Leicester no, don't, Square don't, every day. Don't, hit him! Don't, don't hit him, right? Okay, now, time oh, to meet the team. Will you please welcome on the piano our pianist, Richard Thomas. <laughs> Long-haired Richard is currently being sued by a German music promoter. Yeah, she's got it all wrong, though, because she's... Well, we can't take sides on it, Richard. Things, so I'm, I think, you know, she might be right. And uh, on the listings couch, husband and wife information, Dutz, Joe Unwin and the actor Kevin Eldon. <laughs> Very popular. And uh, be hiding behind the sofas, new bar slave duo, Trevor and Natalie. Trevor and Natalie, hiding behind the sofas. Trevor and Natalie. They're easy on ad 
Adam I, That's right. who does the video re review games for Live and Kicking, of course. Um, I've been thinking about this Emma Noble thing, Stu. Yeah, you can't yeah. buy that kind of publicity, right? No. And that is why I've fitted up, fixed up our own game show hostess, Natalie, right. with the Ian Kignall, the son of Mr. Tom Kignall, the Shadow Minister for Dairy Products. What? Give him a round of applause. Here he is. Ian Kignall, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is. There he is. He's only... He's only about six years old. He's still the son of an MP, so oh. you can't buy this kind of publicity. Go on, mate, get in there. Go on. She wants it. What's wrong with you? Go on, kiss her. What's wrong with you? Are you Rich. mad? Go on. Front page news, yeah, RB yeah. Stu. Front page news, Rich, but for an entirely different reason now. <laughs> now all we need to do, go on, is to find a politician's child to go out with Trevor, No Stu. one's going to go out with Trevor. Look, his face is too small. Look at that. Shut up. No speaking, Trevor. No. No, he's lovely, Stu. Uh, if your mum and dad are politicians, you'd like to go out with Trevor, uh, please do write in. It'll be great publicity for us. <laughs> and that means you, William Straw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fool once said to me, do you not find it interesting that many pre-Christian pagan religions share Christian images such as virgin birth, divine conception, wise men and sacrifice? And I replied, no, I don't find it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> You, uh, you know that song, Dr. Jones, by Aquas, yeah, yeah. yeah. Arnold from Different Strokes bought every copy of that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. successful. Here's what's coming up later in the show. At 12.25, we'll be asking, why do fools fall in love with Anthea Turner? <laughs> and at 12.35, we'll be showing you how to brighten up a child's birthday party by serving them plates of those little yellow cakes you find in men's urinals. <laughs> That's right. At 12.47, I'll be asking, who is the real sick man? It's you, Rich. It's always you. It might not be this time. You. It isn't. At 12.59, we'll be celebrating St. Patrick's Day by making Brad Pitt perform all his lines from The Devil's Own in front of an invited audience of real Irish people. <laughs> I need that money, Tom. Hey. You can do those impressions too, oh, no, Stuart. It's, good, it's great. It? Yeah. Rory Bremner, watch out because you're rubbish. Now, last week, <laughs> we uh, asked you to send in your own ideas for crossbreeds between the genes of celebrities and other life That's forms. That's right. Here they are. Now, I don't know what this indicates, but we were sent a high proportion of submissions involving Denise Van Outen, Ainsley Harrier. Uh, we like this one best. It's very the, good. The uh, braided mole goose and Jarvis Cocker. <laughs> Probably means nothing. Areas. But here are a few of our favourite individual ones. <laughs> First of all, from... Uh, Rob Aidy, a Danny Baker giraffe. Look, the tongue moves, Stu, but it's fallen out now, hasn't yeah. it, ironically? <laughs> well, he won't be able to lick Chris Evans' bum now. <laughs> he won't. <laughs> there it is. That's how that happened. Imagine if it worked. <laughs> it's one simple prop. This one here is uh, Tamara Peckworth's head face on a poodle. <laughs> Seems very appropriate, that, somehow. <laughs> Down here, David Whitley of Loughborough has sent us the Dalai camel. Yeah. <laughs> Not the Dalai Lama like you thought. Ah, ah no. <laughs> and here, uh, two artists independently sent in images of Marky e. Smith's head on small dogs. <laughs> Do you think that means something? I don't know what it could mean, nothing. But could be. uh, best of all was this one. Toby Poole from Bristol sent us this a cross of the Queen, the uh, body of a donkey, and the eyes of the devil himself. <laughs> Scary, and that is the best one because look, it's in 3D. None of you idiots thought of that, did no. you? That's why you lost thought. Well, this bloke sort of thought of it. Rich broke it. <laughs> right, so, Toby Paul is this week's king of the show. Crown <laughs> King Toby, why? why? Well, I was just like, meant to be revising for an exam, and I was bored. So you did that? Yeah. Right. He's revised for an exam, and he's clearly from the West Country, and that <laughs> yes. is how we revise in the West Are Country. Are you being examined in this? Then? <laughs> right. A plus. It's an amazing... What do you think of the moral implications, though, of this queen, devil, donkey? It's real. It's real? It's real. No, well, it clearly yeah. isn't real. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> As king, you'll not only be stroked and touched by a man whose face is so much smaller than his head that it looks like a two-pence piece in the centre of the moon. Stuart, no. him. You'll also get to eat and drink whatever you desire from this... The Golden Grahams Contravention of Product Placement Rules Trolley! Here it comes. Here it is. It comes a small boy and a gigantic woman bringing it on. It is Golden Grahams. Yeah. Uh, Second 
celebrated uh, with all the most famous Hi. Grahams in the world there from I Ruled the World. If I Ruled the World, Graham Gardner. Yeah, there. that's uh, Graham McPherson, better known to you as Suggs from Karaoke Challenge. And look, there's Graham Linnan. <laughs> You're right. He's just a bloke we know. No, he wrote uh, yes. Paris. <laughs> Um, our question right. make this foul cereal, Britain's most popular breakfast treat, continues the pace with this, our Golden Graham's advert. Rich, mm -hmm. try these Golden Graham's. They're no, delicious. No thanks, G. I, I don't think I'm the kind of person who would like to eat Golden Graham's. Well, go on, just try them, just for me, go on. Well, all right, if it will shut you up, I will try them. But I'm not going to like them. Oh, they look awful. Mmm! Oh, oh. <laughs> Golden Graham's are most excellent. Mmm! That's our advert yeah. there. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, did you, did you, thank, thank you. you. No. Good advert. Thank you. They'll be stealing it and doing it themselves. All right. They'll do it. There's no need to be sarcastic. <laughs> thank you. Did you really like those, though? Well, really? they're all right at first, you, but they leave a kind of unpleasant aftertaste. Sort of um, brackish. Brackish isn't it? is exactly the word. the word for them. Yeah. Now, Bracking. King Toby, there's not much of a choice here this week, admittedly. So, would you rather have Golden Grahams or nothing? <laughs> I think I'll have nothing. Nothing! Oh, well, the advert didn't work Never there. Mind. The king <laughs> has spoken. Hooray! Well, they lived in the body and a lot of fun, but they all need each other one for all and all for one. They come out your belly button when you're asleep, and over to organ and they sneak and eat creep. With Lily Liver, Henry Hart, Barry Bladder and Beryl Brain, yes, it's time to meet the organ gang again. Who's in Mr. Cosgrave's pedal bin today? It's Barry Bladder. Hello, Barry. I hear this week, Barry Bladder, you had a wee adventure. This is Organland. There's the statue of the Blessed St. Pancreas. And look, over there, it's the Space Museum. That's right. Today, the gang are visiting the Organland Space Museum. And this is Appendage 11, in which Neil Armlung first landed on the moon. <coughs> I've just after the toilet. This must be it. Phew, I'm bursting. <coughs> oh, no. Barry has accidentally gone into a rocket instead of the toilet. Oh, no. Who's that hiding there? It's dastardly Derek Duodenum and his foul sidekick, Muttley. I mean, the vile bile duct. They hate the other organs for no particular reason. Don't press that button, Derek. Ha ha ha, we have organition. Help me, there isn't a toilet on board. What will happen to Barry? Will anyone notice that this episode is based on an obscure 1970s magic roundabout book? Will Barry land on a planet of the toes? And if not, why is this week's show entitled that? The organ gang there, dividing the nation between good and rubbish. What do you think, King Toby? Organ gang, good or rubbish? Rubbish. Rubbish, the two kings in a two row. Two kings in a row, and then people booing. <laughs> it's yeah, it's hard to know, you're an unpopular king. Who would you like to be served by, Trevor or Natalie, or a small child? Well, Natalie's better looking, so I'll choose Natalie. Natalie hey, not Trevor. Better looking than anyone right, in the southwest. anyway. Well, that's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, well, I've started doing well, it. Because yeah. she's <laughs> got a human head on a human body. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, Trev, you know, We've been going on about Trev's face being, being too small for weeks, but I, I've thought of a way of trying to make you feel more at home, Trev. Look, I've done this. Can you see? What I've done? <laughs> can you see how it's well? I've put like uh, Stu, a photocopy. We can see what you've stopped. Just leave. Photocopy of my own face. We can see what you've done. It isn't well, funny. It, Don't I'm mock there, the afflicted. That's what he's like. You wouldn't Look. do that to the elephant, man, would you? <laughs> anyway, over to <laughs> <Pretty> little Joe. <laughs> All right, <laughs> he's dead. Over to <laughs> Joe Unwin and her husband, the actor Kevin Eldon, for this week's listing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, OK, this is you guys, right? Uh, we don't know what to do this week! Well, shut up and listen, then. First up, Spanish Fly. 
wait. People in Malvern will get a chance to see a Spanish fly this Tuesday lunchtime. <laughs> Spanish man Jose Norman will be visiting the town which, with the fly, which he captured in his garden in Barcelona. Malvern residents will be able to look at the fly in a jam jar and compare it to an English fly if one happens to fly past. Uh, Greg Evigan is not expected to attend. <laughs> And today is annual Confused Directory Inquiries Day. All over the country, childish people will be dialing 192 for directory inquiries and when the operator answers, saying, I'd like the number for directory inquiries, please. <laughs> so join in with that if you enjoy being pointlessly puerile. And remember, this fun game will only work if you deny knowing the number of directory inquiries, no matter how annoyed the operator gets. <laughs> and that's all the listings for this week. Hey, uh, guys, I, I was just thinking... Um... Talking of director of inquiries, right, there's a certain little number I'd like to get from a guy, right? The guy's name is Tony. I am Roger Crowley, and you will never meet a more wicked man. On Thursday, I decided to raise the Loch Ness Monster from his watery depths, hypnotize him and make him my slave, destroying all who refuse to bow before me. Let the mayhem commence. I made my incantation, and the watery beast rose up and floated towards me as though hypnotized. And here he is. Oh, my. Look. He is in my power. Uh, I am hungry, Roger. Yes, I know. Uh, I need flesh. Mm. I will eat Mrs. Rampton. Shh, be quiet, Nessie. You have two days to agree to my demands, or the monster is released. Oh, yes. One day you will all see my power. Tony Blair's joke I think I ever heard, you know. Yeah. To be honest, in previous weeks I found them a bit disappointing, but I think that joke could actually bring down the government. It was well, brilliant. Yeah. I'm it, just telling it how it is, oh, you know. If you'd had a bit sorry, more Kev, faith in me, just... In my ear that uh, we lost transmission there for a, a couple of minutes. Oh, I'm no. sorry, just... That means everyone at home will have missed your Tony Blair's joke. They missed, oh, they, no. that, well, that's OK, we've got time to do it again. Well, yeah, if I think well, of, uh, like, the, the director no, of inquiries, there's one... Kevin, shut Kevin, up. there is time. No, there's one particular number I'd like to get. I'd like to get hold of Tony's got wife, she's right. We haven't got time. We have to move on, I'm sorry. You don't understand, do you? <laughs> I need this. <laughs> you know, um... Gosh, oh, uh, he's an idiot. Um, <laughs> it's not real, is it? It's only a joke. <laughs> it is real. It is real. <laughs> Shh. Well, I've created a bad atmosphere, yeah. sorry. <laughs> it's all right. By referring to it, you've... No. Made it worse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know pralines, actually, yeah. the, in Quality Street, those green chocolates, you know those? Yeah. Arnold from Different Strokes chooses those first out of the whole team. believe it. Actually, did you see um, Paul and Linda McCartney out this week? Uh, they were getting a bit overexcited mm. about their uh, daughter's fashion show yeah, there. It's so awful, isn't it, when your parents are so embarrassed. Look, ooh, look, yeah. oh, God. It is, it is embarrassing, embarrassing yeah. parents. Actually, I remember, yeah. Rich, uh, your parents coming to see us on tour. Do you remember, Rich? Yeah, we that's right, yeah. Putting a live show, and they're from Somerset, aren't they, your, yeah, your parents? Right. And, uh, your yeah. dad, I remember, he was embarrassing because he came into the theatre and uh, when the usherette showed him to his seat with a torch, he became sort of trapped in the beam. Yeah. And he <laughs> the then when the lights went down at the start of the show, Richie's dad, he stood up and he was showing, please, someone help me, I've gone blind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, Very funny, from she's still doing the summer Yeah, stuff. And uh, yeah. your mum's embarrassing as well, isn't she, Rich? Why? Because, um, like all your friends say... Don't you bring my mum into uh, this. She you... looks exactly like Bobby Robson. You shut up, she doesn't! <laughs> That's what she they does not look like Bobby Robson. Say that, she doesn't, and she does right. resemble him, which she doesn't. She looks like him when he was, uh, during his playing career, he was handsome. Yeah, a handsome man. Really. Do you shut up? I feel very sorry for Linda McCartney, though, there, Stu, because uh, she's become world famous, hasn't she, for baking pies, yeah. slaving away in her kitchen all day, and somehow she's ended up with this nobody husband who's never even baked so much as a biscuit, yeah, well, I don't and obviously know. only married her because she's famous. I don't think you can call Paul McCartney a nobody. Well, has he ever baked a pie, Stu? Well, no, he hasn't. Let me tell you a story. When they got married, right, 
Paul McCartney had yeah. the audacity to say he should join in with Linda making the pies. Well, he didn't. Even though he'd never made a pie in his life it before, right? Like and even though everybody in the world knew that he had no kind of pie-making talents of any a kind. Pie maker, right? But Linda was didn't want to embarrass him, so she put him at the back of the kitchen yeah. where no one could really see what he was doing. <laughs> but one day, someone smuggled out one of Paul's flaming pies oh, yeah, yeah. and showed it to everyone in the world. The pie of only Paul. That's what it was called, yeah. yeah, yeah it became right. known as that. Yeah. Revealing Paul McCartney as the nobody, talentless fool yeah, I, he actually is. you can say he's talentless, Richard. What's he ever done, Paul well, McCartney? Okay, all right. The Name best, one thing The Paul best McCartney way, Richard, I can Nothing. think of explaining to idiot. you one who thing. Paul McCartney is, is once again... Don't play for time. ...by showing one you thing. this children's <laughs> show that I videoed off of Sky TV. Here it is. <laughs> Farewell and adieu to you, my Spanish ladies. Oh, hello again, children. Uh, it's me, Histor, Sky TV's one-eyed pirate history crow. Fly the jib, Pliny. Okay. Ah, Pliny, what on earth are you doing? I am frying the jib, Histor, like you said. Ah, oh, you half-wit. I said fly, not fry. That jib is ruined. Oh, sorry, Histor. Anyway, what's the news, Histor? Well, you may have seen on the grown-up news that Paul McCartney of the Beatles made a spectacle of himself at a French fashion show. Who are the Beatles, Histor? I've never heard of them. Well, to find out the answer to that question, we have to go all the way back to 1961. As the crow flies. <laughs> The ancient settlement of Liverpool, Pliny. Back in 1961, the inhabitants were little more than savages, living in caverns under the ground. Just like today. But look, <laughs> who is that heathen man skulking in the bushes? It is the revolutionary John Lennon. John Hennon, I hate hens. And there is about to be an egg. egg. Extraordinary meeting. Meet wing like a bird's wing. Oh, oh John Lennon. I'm Paul McCartney. Would you like to form a band? Yeah, fab. We could call it the Beatles and play in one of the caverns and be one of the best groups ever. Yeah, and we could have fun, yeah? Hey, I'm Ringo Starr. I'm Ringo Mmm, they're gear. Seeing you has made me realise that writing books about trains with human faces is stupid and childish. I should be playing drums in the Beatles, uh, pulling the same funny face over and over again, and singing about being in an octopus's garden. Yeah, but hold on. We need someone to be the quiet one. I'm George Harrison. I'm quiet! <laughs> So, why did it all go wrong, Histor? Because the Beatles began to experiment with the one thing the that, one throughout, wing. that throughout history has destroyed all that is good and pure in this world, Pliny. Love. Le Earth? That's French for egg. <laughs> John Lennon fell in love in with, Earth. with Yoko Ono. Yo oh, was she an egg? No, Pliny. Yoko Oh. Paul McCartney fell in love Le Earth. With Linda McCartney, and they became the most embarrassing parents ever. Feather, like a bird's feather. <laughs> George Harrison became so quiet, no one knows what happened to him at all. I'm over here. Only <laughs> Ringo managed to avoid the drug of love. The earth. Due to his high principles and his ugly face, and the fact he was drunk all the time. And he has remained king. Wing. Of England to this day. This lay like a bird lays, ain't it? <laughs> that was great. Just time for tea now, Histor. Fried eggs! What? Wait until I get my wings on you. Those are eggs my wife laid this morning. You killed my unborn children. <laughs> Looks like I embryo you. An apology, Histor. See you next time, kids. <laughs> oh, you killed them. Why did you do it? You understand now, Rich? Yeah, that, that's made a lot clearer. I was wrong about Paul McCartney. He's a good I think bloke. you embryo him and apologize. I do. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, as soon as it went badly, I thought I'd do it twice. <laughs> now, <laughs> King Toby, in your royal capacity, yeah. make a new law that everyone has to abide. What do you want to see happen? I don't want to see American people on trains the ever again. The king wants Americans <laughs> banned from trains forever. The king has spoken. <laughs> Men of Achievement 1974. This week's Man of Achievement 1974 is Anthony A. Murto, a city planner from Connecticut. Author of No Refuse Refused, he is a president of Waterberg Municipal Administrators Association. He enjoys woodworking. Men of Achievement, 1974. You know that Men of Achievement 1974, yeah. Stuart? Arnold from Different Strokes loves that. That's his favourite <laughs> bit of the programme. Not going anywhere. <laughs> it isn't. Um, please welcome our guests uh, today who are from <laughs> Channel 4's... Like, uh, something's gone wrong and I've just spoilt it by losing track. That was the best <laughs> Come on, bring them in. Come on, bring them in. Bring in the flowers. It's all now, right, there we go. If this was Chris Evans, you'd go, Oh, you'll never work again. <laughs> <laughs> right, you it's, won't actually ever work again. So there you are. It's, um, <laughs> From Channel 4, Light Lunch, will you please welcome Mel and Sue? Hooray! 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 How are you, girls? All right. That's yeah, good. Yeah. Not bad. Before yeah, we start, um, we've just been sent this. You were actually featured in one of our celebrity heads on cats' bodies. Here we go. Down, you're down here. Oh, look. There's, uh, that's you. John Stapleton was a lion. He's the king. <laughs> and look, you're down there with the other daytime presenters as cats. Can you we're see beneath that? Geraldo, which is <laughs> yeah. excellent. But above Bob Mills. But yeah. then, who's beneath Geraldo and above Bob Mills? But Fern Britton's a cow there. She's got a Frisian market. Yeah, she's a cat with Frisian market. Okay. How do you feel about um, the hello. fact that? Hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. How do you feel that someone's <laughs> chosen to portray you as um, having the bodies of cats? You flattered. Know, flattered by the Geraldo thing as well. Mm. Who's Geraldo? Geraldo's <laughs> is a leather-faced old man, American man, isn't he? Have I got that right? I don't know. I've never heard of him. He's only on television for ten minutes, and hierarchically, he's far above us. Do you know what? We've got three and a half minutes for this interview. Shall we not spend most of it talking about Geraldo? All right, then. Okay. Uh, what do you want to talk about? Who's the best? You've interviewed loads of celebrities, yeah. unlike oh, us. Yes. We've just interviewed you. Um, <laughs> and who's your favourite celebrity you've ever interviewed? There was a Richard Lee and a Stuart Herring. We were, was us. Yeah. Yeah. we were on. Actually, yeah. when we were on, you, uh, you made us eat uh, Arnold from Different Strokes' favourite food, which is beetroot and flour. Honestly. Honestly. Literally yeah. made oh. So we're returning the compliment. There's a jar of beetroot for you each, which you have to eat by the end of the interview. Eat the and beetroot. some flowers. Which these Kate these are in. flipping poisonous. They are. <laughs> They're not edible like the ones you gave. I'm not going to spit mine out like you did. I'm no, gonna don't, eat them, don't eat them, they're yeah. poisonous. Stamens. Um, we, didn't right, think, we, didn't think, we didn't think you'd be so professional to try and eat them, because I think they are actually poisonous tulips. <laughs> but you eat, can we eat the beetroot? Beetroot is the antidote, beetroot though. Nice. So it's <laughs> right. I like beetroot. Um, who's the worst guest you've ever had? On there were some like people called Sutty. Stu Lee. <laughs> oh, um, Sutty was tricky. Sutty? We had three puppets and their puppeteer right. sort of operators. Right. Roger Corsi and Nookie Bear. Puppets, Yeah. Orville. And yeah. Keith Herring. Yeah. Keith Herring. That's my Keith guess. Herring. <laughs> he was, I think he was a well known artist. He's I don't dead think he was on. Now. Yeah, Sorry. He's a dead artist. I'll, dead. I'll just eat him and probably my beats. The fact the guy's dead is probably why uh, uh, the puppet was difficult. Yeah. You know, it wasn't really... But Orville oh. kept on interrupting anything we said. Yeah. I had, I had Keith cheap, Harris like isn't... this for an hour. Just know just that. Did you? Go, yeah. Yes, so. Like, oh, yes, so. Yes, so. What, on your buttocks? He wasn't. Yeah. Well, no, that was later oh, right. on the show. He wasn't on my buttocks. Are you um? Are you going on tour this year at all? I was wondering. No, yeah, but are you? Tour. Yeah, we are actually going on tour. We're not really allowed to <laughs> mention it on telly. Seeing as you brought it up, but if, as you brought it up, it's part of the interview now. We're coming to a town near you, everyone. Where, uh, where, where's Norwich. your tour going to be then? Norwich. Norwich. Um, um, other places as well as Norwich. Us, yeah. <laughs> are you doing a, a six o'clock, a new six o'clock show on the thirty-first of March, running Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays every week no, for six weeks? I can't imagine anyone's doing that. Because we are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mel and Sue, they're doing a new show that starts at 6 o'clock. Yes, this is very nice, actually. Give them a round of applause. Mel and Sue. Ugh. <laughs> Jews, listen. The Messiah has already come, and his name is Jesus. Now, I'm giving you one last chance to admit it now because there won't be any time later. 
<laughs> the unusual priest there. You know, it seems like every TV show you tune into these days has a kind of head-size inquisitive citrus fruit, doesn't it? <laughs> and we're no exception. Please welcome the Curious Orange! <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Rich. Hello, Mr. Stew. I'm Curious Orange. Right, yeah. just, just calm down a bit. Stop showing off. Uh, what, are you, what are you curious about this week? Well, the one thing that's been keeping me curious all week, and it's this little curious question. Oh, Where does the odd sock go in the laundrette? Oh. Yeah, every time you start with a pair of socks, yeah. but when you get home, uh, you've only got one left. I mean, what's that all about? Yeah. It's mad. I bet you don't know why that is. Well, um, I can answer that, actually, Curious Orange. Oh. Yeah, right. The thing is, that doesn't happen every time you go to the laundrette, does it, right? No, no, it does. Every no, time you no, go it doesn't. It doesn't happen sock. every... Do, do, Look, do, if do, it do. happened every time, no one would ever go to the laundrette, would they? It'd be stupid. It doesn't happen. It just doesn't... It only happens occasionally. Yeah, yeah. But where do they go? Those odd socks. No. What's happened to them? That's what I'm curious about. If you just listen yeah, to what you... I'm saying, I will tell you the answer. Yeah, you know? yeah. Do they disappear through a wormhole no. in time into another dimension? No, 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 no. Look, I've told you, I've told you, you're not the bad observational comedy orange, are you? You're the curious orange. Now, curious. do you want... trying to be funny. Well, it isn't funny, is it? Just a bad, rubbish observation, right? And this is what happens, I'll show you, with the use of this washing machine here, right? Look, look, look at this. Look, listen but there's to the Mr. drum with the washing machine, right? Now, that's got ridges in it, okay? Now, a damp sock can get stuck on one of those ridges, and it's wet as well, so, look, it's not going to be dislodged what by spinning the drum. Doing? And so it just gets stuck in there. You don't Warren, notice it in the dark, he's right? If you questions. listen, if you checked your drum more fastidiously at the end of your wash, then you wouldn't have this lost sock problem, all right? Yeah. Oh, all right then. But is it the odd sock elf? No, it isn't. It steals away no, the no. sock. No. No. It is what kind of an elf would be interested in taking socks anyway? A sock elf. There isn't a sock elf. <laughs> Living in a sock forest. It isn't right. It's not. It's not to do with elves. It's the drum. I've like explained. All right. No, it is. Yeah. But, is, um, is your curiosity satisfied, Curious Orange? Yeah. I'm just I'm trying to make a joke. Is, <laughs> is your curiosity satisfied? Answer the question. Yes, Mr. Rich. Good. Anyway, I was a bit curious about something actually coming off the back of that. Uh, wh why are you washing socks anyway? <laughs> what? Well, you know, you're an orange. You know, why do you need socks? You haven't got any feet. Oh, I never... No! Oh, can't see God for making me this way! I have no revenge! I want feet! I have no revenge! I want feet! Here's the first um, in a new series. Sorry. It's about some teachers. <laughs> My name is Alan Harris. I've been teaching here at St Ian's for 10 years now. <laughs> These things are sent, etc. <laughs> My colleague in the English department is Ian Kennedy. Oh, hello, Mr Kennedy. Uh, morning, Tway. Uh, no, Mr Harris. Uh, oh, the, uh, the inspectors are in today. Oh, I am scared. Well, I'm a bit nervous too, but I'm sure we'll muddle through. Yeah, I was being sarcastic, Alan. Oh, uh, Oh, so was I. <laughs> Come on, listen. I'm talking. It's your own time you're wasting. I can wait here all day. I've got some Mars Celebration chocolates. What on earth is going on in here? Just because your teacher's left you unattended doesn't mean you have to behave like animals. <laughs> oh, um... Mr. Harris. Yeah. OK, now, don't look round at once, but we have got the government school inspectors in today. That's him up the back there. Unless that's old Gary Glitter looking for his new girlfriend. <laughs> now, unless I watch my step today, I am going to get in quite a bit of trouble with the government. But if I toe the line, I run the risk of losing your respect. Pick up your copies of Milton's Paradise Lost. Uh, when you open it, page one. And then draw a representation of a dog's genitalia all over it. That's right, come on, do it. That is what I think of old John. I can't see anything Milton. All right, come on, come, calm down. 
or I might have to keep you in at break. And I really mean it today as well, so think on. Yes, please, Mr. Harris, just act as if I'm not in there. I am doing. It's always like this. Who cares what old John, I've been dead for ages, Milton thinks hell is like? I've got my own idea of hell. Running out of Rizzlers at four o'clock in the morning. You know what I'm talking about? The old ganja, the old crazy Oxo cubes, the old William Straw magic mix. That is a worse idea of hell than anything written about in this crap. That's right. I said crap in front of the old inspector from Tony Blair's SS's face. He doesn't like it, does he? Look. Look at his face. <laughs> please be good, children. Please, look. just let me get through this, and I'll never try to make you do anything I want again. Come on. No, I'm sure you'll all be very interested to learn that I have here the results of the government inspection. Hey, uh, looks like yours truly will be a bit of uh, trouble with the headmaster today. You won't, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, the inspector didn't even feel you were worth mentioning. No, nearly everybody was absolutely fine. Very well done. Um, Mr. Harris, uh, will you see me in my office at break time? Thank you. No, toilet patrol. It's come to my attention that several... The head was very nice about everything, really, and uh, I, I do hope I'm allowed to carry on teaching. I, I love it so. I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't, you know, the, the kids. And... Still, uh, the, the marking must be done. See, this studio audience here is so wet today. They've been seeing us everywhere. Stop it, all right. You stop, look. You see that kid, what? that little kid we had, Ian Kignall's yeah. kid? He's been laughing at me all the way through well, this show. He's allowed to do that. He's not. Him. He thinks he's better than me, Ian well, Kignall's kid. He does. I hate him. Look, well, get it. look you, stop laughing at me. Look, all right? Just leave him How him. old are you, mate? Just leave him. How old are you? Ten. Ten. Just leave him Ten, him. Ten years just old? Leave I'm 30 yeah, years old, all right? So I'm better than you, all right? Just screw you. Shut it, all right? Yeah, no. Uh, what exams have you taken? What exams have you got, mate? <laughs> what exams have you got? Nothing. He hasn't got any well, exams. He hasn't taken. Ten years he hasn't taken. I, mate. I listen. I've got eleven O levels. That's proper O levels from the old days when it was hard. Not GCSEs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, over thirty applauding. Yeah. Well done. I've got four A levels and a degree from Oxford Just University. All right. So I'm better than. Don't look at it. Like He's taking the mickey out of me. You see this, mate? Look at this. I've got something to show you. Look. See that there? Glinting in the light. Can you see it? <laughs> that 36p there. Can you see it? My mum didn't give me that. Right. <laughs> I earned that, so I'm better than you. Hey, look, pennies fall on the floor. I don't even care. I'm going to leave it there. I don't care. I'll leave tell you something. It. He doesn't look at him. I'll tell you something else, mate. At least I've got some pubic hair. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe you have, Rich. But none of it's yours, is it? <laughs> I collected it, Stu. I, I sewed it together into a merkin, so <laughs> technically it belongs to you me, can't all right? Just leave it's not Stu. <laughs> come on, come back at me, mate. Come back with the best shot you've got. Say so, anything you want to me, come on. Yeah. You're fat, chubby yeah. chops. <laughs> Hello again. The last we saw of Barry Bladder was him hurtling into space in a toiletless rocket. My eye, Barry's rocket has crashed. <coughs> oh, there he is. But what's that he's landed on? Oh, stranger, thank you. I am the Big Toe, the mayor of the planet of the Toes. Your alien craft has killed our evil totalitarian leader. The huge smelly sock. Like in The Wizard of Oz? No, because that was a witch, not a sock. Ding, Ding dong, dong, the sock is dead. Smelly sock, sock is dead. It's still not the same. In return for your bravery, you may have anything you want. What is it that you desire? <coughs> I want to go to the toilet. <laughs> Barry was treated like a god by his newfound friends. <laughs> Hey, who's that swimming in my pop? It was the tiniest toe he had ever seen. <laughs> I will call you Tweaky. I'm just off to the toilet. 
One day, Barry was investigating his new home planet when he saw something that made him feel a bit strange. Oh, my God. They did it. They actually did it, the mad organs. <laughs> oh, my, never mind. It's a much better place now. It's ruled by toes, not organs. <coughs> I'm just off to the toilet. <laughs> Where am I? I brought you back home using this teleporting machine that I just remembered I'd invented. <laughs> and Barry proceeded to tell his amazing story. A planet of toes? A huge sock? But I'm sure I was there. I'm sure. Tweaky, you came toe. <laughs> And everyone rolled down the street with laughter at this extraordinarily inventive game. <laughs> Tweaky, where did Barry Bladder go? He just went to the toilet. What's that, Tweaky? Yes, you're right. We've learned that in the kingdom of the toes, the bladder is king. Yes. Yeah. Well, goodbye, Tweaky. Goodbye. The disappointment ringing in the air. We were going to talk to uh, Mel and Sue again about the news, but I suspect we'll be a bit pushed. You by. suspect? But it's like, yes, I suspect there isn't time. But we weren't going we to talk about the news, but in fact, we've got real actual news happening, which is that real Mel has spilled some, um, some oh. beetroot on her beetroot jumper here. Beetroot stains Brilliant. very which, badly. As you know, is a if there's any nice soap uh, powders advertisers yes, watching, maybe we can get an advert out of it. Um, and we're going to have to leave it there. <laughs> Thank you to Mel and Sue. On that bombshell. Mel and Sue, the beetroot covered women. Give a round of applause, Mel and Sue. For it is written, he that hath knowledge spareth his words. I have nothing to add to that. That, uh, that first sentence sums it all up for me. Do you, uh, do you see what I'm implying by my silence? I'm, um, I'm not saying any more precisely because he that hath knowledge spareth his word. Do you see? <laughs> hey, for that. Well, that's the end of the show. Uh, only time to see how Natalie has got on with young Ian Kignell. Oh, Damn brilliant. him to hell! I've been six weeks. I've been trying to get off with her. Damn it! Actually, see, I just got a phone call in from the United States yeah, of America. Yeah. Actually, it's from Arnold from different strokes. Oh, yeah. He was. Uh, he says he likes uh, you best out of me and you. He thinks you're really funny. That's good. I am delighted. <laughs> um, don't forget also, if you're the offspring of a politician, you want to go out with Trevor uh, next week, let us know. And also write in, because next week is Mother's Day. Oh. If you would like to nominate your mother to be the queen of the show oh. on next week's show and tell us why she's the best mum in the world. That's or right. if you just want to tell us how much you hate the organ gang. Or your mum. Uh, <laughs> right, or your mum. Right in to Tawunrunja, room 3306. Bubba to Centre, Wood Lane, <laughs> London Wood 12, Smridge. Or, if you are a cyborg from the future, email us at leonherringcompuserve.com and that thing there, uh, and visit our website. But anyway, yeah. it's the uh, end of the show, Sundays, we're going to sing the hymn now. No, Stu, no! Christianity isn't the only religion in this country. We must reflect the ethnic diversity of this country. How are you going to do that? We, then, I, now? I know lots of other songs from other religions. What, what? Put on your Eastern garb, everyone, and sing Javinda Jaya Jaya by <laughs> Kula Shaker. Here we go. Three, four. Go. Govinda Jaya Jaya, Gopala Jaya Jaya, Radha Ramana Hari. Govinda Jaya Jaya. Go.